Introduction to Routing Protocols. In this section, I am going to cover routing protocols. The goal of routing protocol is to help the host to reach its end destination. The host can be servers, client PCs, wireless access points, or printers. Assume you want to travel to some place, and sometimes you may know how to reach that destination with the short and longest routes. In some cases you won't know the full information on how to reach that destination, you may have partial information to reach that destination. But somehow you want to start the journey and the intention to reach that end destination. Routing protocols you choose for host behaves the similar way in finding a route. Either it knows full information or partial information about the destinations. Both options have their own pros and cons. We will have a deep look in the upcoming sections. Classification of routing protocols. The routing protocols can be broadly classified into two. IGP and EGP. The IGP stands for Interior Gateway Protocol and EGP stands for Exterior Gateway Protocol. An example of EGP is BGP, which is the routing protocol of the Internet. The IGP is commonly used within the enterprise, data center, or service provider environments. The IGP is further classified into two. Link State Routing Protocol and Distance Vector Routing Protocol. The OSPF and AUSAUs fall under the Link State Routing Protocol. RIP version 1, RIP version 2, RIP Next Gen, IGRP, and EIGRP fall under the Distance Vector Routing Protocol. The most commonly used IGP's protocols are OSPF and AUSAUs. It acts as an underlay routing for most other protocols like BGP, MPLS, VXLAN, etc. The upcoming sections will cover more details about the protocol OSPF. Introduction to OSPF. OSPF stands for Open Shortest Path First. It is the most commonly used routing protocol for enterprise, service provider, and data center networks. OSPF is an old protocol developed in the late 1980s. It's a link state-based routing protocol. It imposes hierarchy and standards based. It's based on RFC 2328 IETF open standard. This protocol can interoperate between multi-vendor equipment like Cisco and non-Cisco devices, for example Cisco to Juniper devices or Cisco to Alcatel Lucent routers. It has an independent transport protocol number 89. It's highly scalable and has faster convergence. Updates are sent efficiently using multicast. It can support VLSM. VLSM stands for Variable Length Subnet Masking. It overcomes the limitation of legacy protocols like RIP or IGRP. RIP has a metric of hop count. It can have a maximum of 15 hops, and anything beyond 15 hops is considered as unreachable. How OSPF Discover Its Neighbors OSPF uses the Hello protocol for neighbor discovery. The Hello packets contain the following. Router ID and area ID of the originating interface. Subnet mask and authentication information of the originating interface. Hello and dead interval of the originating interface. The router ID of the neighbor devices. Router priority, DR, and BDR information and finally, flag bits. The router it acts as a unique identifier for the OSPF speaking router. The area ID represents the router group. The area ID starts with number 0 which represents the backbone area. The parameters in the hello packets must be agreed by the peering device to form neighborship. The hello packets act as a keypolive for the neighbors. It also helps in electing the DR and BDRs in broadcast networks. The following parameters must match for successful OSPF neighborship. Area ID. Hello and dead interval. Authentication. MTU stub flags and finally, network mask. OSPF neighbor states. The OSPF speaking router has to transition to multiple phases before it becomes fully adjacent with its neighbors. The following list below shows the states of transitions in the OSPF. Starting with the down state to the final stage of the full state. The OSPF starts with down state then followed by init state, then followed by two-way state, then followed by X start state, then followed by exchange state, then followed by loading state, and finally goes to full state. Let's have a look at each one of these states in detail. In down state, no neighbors are detected. This means no hellos are heard from the neighbor. If the OSPF neighbor is in the process of going down, then it will clear its link states which include database summary, link state requests, and any retransmissions. In init state the hello packets are seen from the neighbor, but there is no bi-directional communication established. In two-way state, the router has seen its own router ID from its neighbor hello, meaning bi-directional communication is established. 
The next start state the routers will decide who will be master and who will be the slave. The router with the highest router ID becomes the master wins. It will also determine the initial sequence number for the DDP packets. DDP stands for Database Description Packets. In exchange state the router will send the database description packets to its neighbor. It will be a summary of the entire link state database. It will also use LSR to request the LSA. LSR stands for Link State Request and LSA stands for Link State Advertisement. In loading state the router will use LSR to request the most recent LSA, which is missed in the exchange state. LSR is like a request and replies to that request, or LSU. LSU stands for Link State Update. In full state the neighbors will be fully adjacent to each other, which is the happy state in OSPF. OSPF message types. To build the OSPF adjacency there are multiple packet types involved throughout the process. Those packet types are listed below. Hello. DBD. LSR. LSU. LSAC. The Hello packet uses type 1 LSA to discover the neighbors and to build adjacency between OSPF speaking routers. The DBD packet uses type 2 LSA to check if the OSPF database is in a synchronized state. The LSR packet uses type 3 LSA to request other LSAs from neighbor routers. The LSU packet uses type 4 LSA to send the requested LSAs to the requester router. The LSAC packet uses type 5 LSA to acknowledge the packet types. OSPF Design Considerations When you design OSPF, few things have to be considered in mind. If you're planning for OSPF with a single area you can start with any number. It's not mandatory to always start with area 0. But if you're planning for multiple areas considering future requirements then area 0 is a must. Note all other areas should connect to the backbone area, that is area 0. Area 0 must be contiguous. You should not have a single area to be part of two different area 0 domains at the same time. For example OSPF area 1 connected to two different area 0 backbones, if you have point-to-point -point links with Ethernet interface by default OSPF consider it as a broadcast network and will elect DR and BDR on point-to-point -point links, you can turn off that by changing the OSPF link type to point-to-point. -point. OSPF on broadcast medium. If you have OSPF speaking routers using the same broadcast medium then DR and BDR elections will happen. The reason for DR and BDR in the broadcast network is to efficiently handle the updates between the shared routers. The broadcast link is considered as pseudonode, meaning the cost from pseudonode to any attached routers will be equal to zero. The DR and BDR routers send updates to all OSPF speaking routers using multicast address 224.0.0.5. The other routers, Drother, send updates to DR BDR using multicast address 224.0.0.6. If any changes happen in the network, instead of flooding broadcast that information to all the routers in the network, that update will be first sent to DRBDR, then DRBDR will update down to its peers. Router priority plays a role in electing the DR and BDR. The DR and BDR election will happen per Ethernet segments. The default OSPF priority is 1. If the router priorities are the same then router ID will be used as tiebreaker. You can manually set router ID, if not set then loopback is first preferred, if no loopback on the device then the highest interface IP address will be chosen as router ID. If you set OSPF priority as zero, then it will be ineligible for DR or BDR elections. Please note there is no preemption in DR and BDR. If DR goes down, and BDR takes over as DR role, and the original DR come back online, role change won't happen, as there is no preemption. OSPF network types. When you enable OSPF on an interface, depending on the interface type, for example Ethernet or serial, the hello and dead intervals changes depending on the link type. So we need to consider those into account while designing the network. Those network types are listed below. Point to point. Point to multipoint. Point to multipoint non-broadcast. Broadcast. Non-broadcast. Non Loopback interfaces. In point-to-point -point network types, OSPF hello packets are sent every 10 seconds, with a dead interval of 40 seconds. There is no DR or BDR elections. The serial link with PPP or HDLC encapsulations are considered as the point-to-point -point links. Other link types like Sonnet, DS3, or T1 are also considered as the point-to-point -point links. In point-to-multipoint -point network types, OSPF hello packets are sent every 30 seconds, with a dead interval of 120 seconds. 
There is no DR or BDR elections. This is the Cisco version of NBMA network where each network is treated as a point-to-point -point network. In point-to-multipoint non-broadcast network types, OSPF hello packets are sent every 30 seconds with a dead interval of 120 seconds. There is no DR or BDR elections. It uses unicast hello instead of multicast. You need to define the OSPF neighbors manually using a neighbor command. In broadcast network types, OSPF hello packets are sent every 10 seconds with a dead interval of 40 seconds. The Ethernet interfaces are considered as broadcast. There will be DR and BDR elections. In non-broadcast network types, OSPF hello packets are sent every 30 seconds with a dead interval of 120 seconds. The multipoint frame relay interfaces are considered as non-broadcast. There will be DR and BDR elections. OSPF LSA types. The routers in each area generate one or more link state advertisements. The collection of LSA forms the link state database. Each of the LSA types has a specific function. The LSA types are listed below. Router LSA. Network LSA. Network Summary LSA. ASBR Summary LSA. As External LSA. The router LSA are generated by each router in an area about all of its connected links. This LSA is flooded within the area. To view use the command show AP OSPF database router. The rib of OSPF will show the routes marked with O. The network LSA are generated by DR on the multi-access network about the attached routers. This LSA is flooded within the area. To view use the command show AP OSPF database network. The network summary LSA are generated by ABR to advertise the destination information of other areas. This LSA is flooded between the areas, that is inter-area. To view use the command show AP OSPF database summary. The rib of OSPF will show the routes marked with OIowa. The ASBR summary LSA are generated by ABR to advertise the ASBR information. This LSA is flooded between the areas, that is inter-area. To view use the command show AP OSPF database ASBR summary. It will inform which router is doing the external route tree distribution. The AS external LSA are generated by ASBR to advertise the destination information of the external networks. To view use the command show AP OSPF database external. The rib of OSPF will show the routes marked with OE2 or OE1.